What conditions have you placed on your unconditional love? That's a serious question because we are in a society full of conditions. I'll do this for you if you do that for me. I'll do this as long as you do that. I'm only going to help you if. It's this quid pro quo that we live with that I don't think we even think about. If we specifically focus on our marriages, it's an easy question to ask. A few of us really, really think about what it means. When we love someone, are we doing that with no conditions? I ask this because few people really understand what love is. I know most of you watching this are Christian, um, and and you you think you know what love is. But remember when I've taught this in pre cana class for many years, and I got people thinking. Because I've said before, perhaps in one of these videos, when I taught pre cana class, I remember asking the young folks, is there anything you could ever do? to stop, any, anything your fiance could ever do to make you stop loving them. And of course, like, no, no, they're madly in love with each other. Until one brave person usually raises his or her hand and says, well, I guess if he or she had an affair. And I said, well, then you're not ready for marriage, which shuts them up and makes the room silent, pin drop silent. An affair is a condition. But let's not go to the affair yet. Of course, with the profession that I'm in, I daily have people come to me. My husband's into pornography. My wife is having affairs. Uh, my, My spouse is saying these abusive things to me. Uh, My spouse is a narcissist. I've dealt too many years with this pain. Now, I am certainly not the person who is going to tell you, oh, well, that's fine, suck it up. But I will say that is a heavy, heavy cross. Are you going to bear it? Or are you choosing not to? Not, Not judging you. Oh my gosh, I left my own marriage twice. As a matter of fact, four years the first time and a month the second time, decades later. There were conditions. Most of the time in today's society, that condition is happiness. If you're happy, you stay. If you're unhappy, you leave. If they're not loving you the way you want, ditch them. If you feel great, keep them. Conditions. But of course, by God, we are taught unconditional love. It is hard as heaven. Truly, it's hard as heaven to do because we're actually asking you to agape or agape, however it's pronounced, each other. Agape is that selfless love that God gives to us, no conditions. Imagine if God stopped loving us every time we offended him, every time we were rude, every time we were offensive every time we were unkind every time we forgot him well i'm done with you praise god he doesn't do that but let's just start with this crazy month the month devoted to the sacred heart of jesus that the world thinks is devoted to that broken rainbow again i stress that because maybe they're not even aware of the fact that they don't have all the colors of god's rainbow maybe they do maybe god didn't allow him to steal his photo rainbow But in this month that is trying to be hijacked, and we hear that crazy phrase, love is love, that is circular, where I say, okay, tell me what that is. What is love? If we're all entitled to have it or do it or feel it, what is it? And don't forget, Jesus would never command us to have a feeling. Christine, love your neighbors. Have feelings for your neighbors. Love one another. 
I have feelings for everyone, even that person at work that annoys the heck out of me, even that person that cut me off on the road, even my neighbor who makes sure his dog goes to the bathroom on my lawn, name it. Do you have feelings for that person? Because it's often not good feelings. Is that love? See, Jesus commands us to love one another, and he uses the word T-O, representing that it is a verb, something we do. I've said this before, it deserves being said again. But Jesus didn't say, love them only if. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to give you some conditions. If they're nice, love them. If they're not, it's okay. He says, well, love one another. Bear your crosses. Follow me. Deny yourself. All those things. And so again, and maybe I'll do this video every year at this time. It behooves us to yet again remember the definition of love. Before I go with the definition, the true definition of love, I want to remind you that I wrote a book called The Super Couple, a formula for extreme happiness in marriage in which... I actually interviewed those couples who rated their marriage as extremely happy, which, by the way, was 35% of the 644 people. So it's like, wow, that's more than one in three thought, oh, extremely happy. And so I interviewed them, found out that there is, in fact, a formula. It's not accidental. It is something they do, which, of course, brings the feeling. While I was discovering this formula, which is sacred, S-A-C-R-E-D, selflessness, attentiveness, communication, respect, encouragement, and deliberateness, read the book, you'll get the bigger parts. I also went into the library where I buried myself for a year or two, and I went back to the oldest dictionary, oldest English dictionary there was. I believe it was early 1700s, can't remember. And what I did is I pulled up all the dictionaries, all the dictionaries brought us up to 2016 when I completed my book. And I looked at the definition of love. Some of the dictionaries had nearly similar in a time frame definition. So I just picked one. But I took this timeline from 1700s up until now. And I watched how with the culture and the changing culture and the attitude, was it wartime? Was it not wartime? Was it the roaring 20s where everything was focused on? Was it the 60s where it was the all about me generation? Or 60s was free love. 70s was considered the all about me. And I watched it go from a spiritual definition focused on something you do to then literally go from a verb to a noun something you feel. And then I watched it change, not just from something you feel, but something you feel sexually. Then I watched it changed into lust. And it was funny, during the time of war, they actually input God back into the definition. And then when things were going well in society, they took God out. It was incredible. You would think such a boring, you know, dictionaries intrigued me, which goes to show our definitions more, but we need to know what the heck Sorry for swearing. It's not a swear word. But I say that for punch. What on earth is the definition? So if there is truth and we need to follow truth and we need to stick with a solid definition, we need to go with the one God gave us. So the definition of love we can find, let me pull it up here again, the definition we got in Corinthians 13. Right? And you've heard this a bazillion times. Love is patient. No. Are you ever impatient with your spouse? Are you ever impatient with your colleague? Are you ever impatient with a friend? Because in that moment, you've stopped loving. L let me read you the whole definition. I want you to think about it in terms of verbs and your actions. Love is is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. I'll get back to that one. 
It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not re rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Here's the thing, guys. Love bears all things. It bears that narcissism. It bears that infidelity. It bears that drinking. It bears those harsh words. It bears all things because love isn't about what they're doing to you. Love is about what you are choosing to do. Love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, never fails. So when we are so focused on everyone else, I ask you, have you ever been impatient with someone? Because when you have, you've stopped loving. I'm not worried about them. Have you ever said or thought an unkind word about somebody? What about your spouse? Have you ever... Worse yet, have you said something unkind to them or about them or to someone else? What about being jealous? He or she makes more money than you, has more friends or has more clout. Have you ever been pompous thinking you're better than they are? Because that's not love because love is not pompous. Love is not inflated and it is certainly not rude. Anytime you are pompous, anytime you're inflated, anytime you're rude, you're not loving. You're breaking a commandment. Love does not seek its own interests. Think about that Bible verse that says, put others before the self. Think more highly of others than you do yourself. Yeesh. So I know I don't always do that, especially when someone gets on my raw nerves. I have someone who's a friend, but she doesn't like me very much. And uh, so I just say friend like that. And I, I know that when I get annoyed by her, I'm not loving if I'm rude to her, if I roll my eyes, or if I think unkind thoughts about her. What if you're in choir and you think your voice is better than somebody else's? You thinking yourself better? What if you're on the road and you make sure to speed up and get in front of the car instead of behind it? Are you not being rude or selfish? You're putting your needs first, right? Love does not seek its own interests. Well, I want to get that spot. Or your cars are merging on the freeway, but you hate when they go in ahead of you. So you speed up so they're not let in. I bring these up because traffic is one of those places that so many people are just nasty, even Christians. What about letting them in in front of you? There are so many ways that we are unloving to our spouses, to our family members, to our colleagues, to people we don't even know. I was going to do a video on micro selfishnesses, right? But this is really the same thing. What about you go grocery shopping and you're tired? And so you leave the shopping cart right out there and you don't take it back in. Well, you risk the next car getting hit by it or you make the staff come out and have to get it. Now, I do have an opinion on that because I've talked with staff. So if it's a really nice day, don't leave your shopping cart out there. Go put it in the rack outside because the staff love to have an excuse to come outside and get the sunshine. But if you want, take it all the way into the store. But when you just park it right there next to your car, you are being selfish. You are being unloving. You're seeking your own interests. Do I even need to mention quick temperedness? Because whenever your temper is quick, not only are you being impatient, not listening, not thinking, you're being unloving. So many of us lose our tempers. And the one I really like to focus on, and this is something that women tend to do more than men, men do it too. But Love does not brood over injury. Basically, love does not keep a record of wrongs. Now, of 
course, the way that our brains are wired, women tend to do that more than others because we just don't have the ability to forget. So we have to keep pushing these thoughts out of our head. Guys, this is what love is. I am not saying it's easy when your spouse is cheating on you. You just found out your spouse has an STD. Your friends are telling you to leave him or her. It's a condition. It's a horrible condition. But it's a condition nonetheless. This life is tough. My suggestion is to stop focusing on this life as if it is the be-all, end-all. This is just a place we're passing through. It's almost as if God allowed us, when he conceived us into being eons ago, he put us here for a short 60, 70, 80, 100 years to pass or to fail the test. Do you love me? Do you not? We have to stop expecting love and joy and, and peace and happiness here. You've got to keep your eyes fixed on heaven. You've got to say, Lord, I'll take whatever cross you give me. Give me the grace to carry it. But I'm one day closer to heaven. I'm just going to keep loving. So I hope this helps. Pull out your, your Bibles. Look at the definition of love. Ask yourself if you are loving without conditions or with conditions and find that one aspect of love that you kind of are, the, are bad at. And I want you to practice it. Practice loving others. Love your neighbor, love your enemy. Sometimes your spouse is your enemy. Let me know how you're doing. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. Thanks for watching Breakfast with Bacon. And as always, remember to live your life sunny side up.